Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to bring you along to clean my kitchen after a couple of days in bed. My husband is away traveling and visiting family, so without his help, things can get out of control pretty quickly. As you can see, there are a lot of dishes that need to be done, but what you can't see as well is how dirty the countertops and floors are. First, I separate into piles things that can go in the dishwasher and what needs to be washed by hand. I tend not to put in the dishwasher anything that is used very frequently as we only run the dishwasher once a day. I'm washing all the items that are too big for the dishwasher as well as pots and frequently used utensils. I always wear gloves as I have a lot of allergies and sensitivities, so I try to avoid having contact with any products. I am constantly rinsing the sink as it's white and it stains very easily, especially anything acidic and with strong colors like tomato sauce, so I just developed the habit of rinsing as I go. Now it is time to load the dishwasher. That's the part that I hate the most as it involves bending and it really puts a strain on my back. I then dry everything on the drying rack. I know I could just let it dry on its own and put it away later, but I find that if there are dishes on the drying rack, the kitchen doesn't get that super clean look and the kids come with dirty dishes and they have an excuse to not wash them because there's no place to put them to dry. I first dry everything and then I start putting them away. I find this way I have to bend less as I can put multiple items away that belong in the same spot by reaching only once. Next is clearing everything off the countertops, like putting away food that was left out and tackling any other bits and pieces that got missed. Then once more, I make sure the drying rack is empty by putting away anything I just washed. After emptying the recycle bin, I always give it a scrub because often things leak and it can become pretty stinky. I'm extremely sensitive to smells and if there's something smelling off, I am the first one to be bothered by it. Now it's time for the most satisfying part, cleaning the countertops. I don't know why I find this so satisfying. Maybe it's because I know I'm near the end, but also because it makes the kitchen look so fresh. First, I just use soap and a kitchen sponge. Then I wipe with a microfiber cloth, rinsing multiple times in between until I get rid of all the soap. Guys, look at that shine. I then clean the stove. I used to cook on a gas stove all my life, pretty much until I moved to Canada. I love how it responds to changes, but once introduced to the practicality of an electric stove and how easy it is to clean, I never went back to gas. They don't look as good, but man, it is so much easier to clean. I clean just as I would a countertop. I try to have as few things permanently on the countertop as possible because I do move things out of the way when cleaning. 
my kids just wipe around. I take things out of the way and make sure that under and behind is also clean. Once all the countertops are clean, I then clean the sink. Next, I clean the window above the sink as it always gets splashed with soap and water. Sometimes even food gets there. Then I do a last wipe of the countertops with this multi-purpose spray because it has some tea tree extract and it works as antibacterial. I also love the eucalyptus smell that it leaves behind. I know it's a bit of an overkill since I have already scrubbed it with soap and water, but hey, since I'm at it, I might as well. I just love that eucalyptus smell that it leaves behind. It just smells so clean. Talking about smelling clean, next is the garbage. It is crazy how much garbage our family produces with seven people living here. I wish we were a bit more waste-free, but that is our reality. I made sure to clean around the garbage can as it can get pretty gross. Sometimes I even spray a bit of the eucalyptus uh, cleaner in the bag just to make it smell nice. When you open the garbage to throw something out, you just get that lovely eucalyptus smell. Then I wipe our dining table with that same spray. I also make sure to give the chairs a wipe as well. I then clean all the stainless steel appliances. I love the look of stainless steel, but they show every fingerprint as soon as you touch it. The dishwasher wasn't full enough to run, so I make sure to set the sign to dirty so the kids know that they can put dishes in there. And lastly, it's cleaning time for the floors. I start by vacuuming with my Dyson cordless vacuum. I absolutely love that it's cordless. Anything that saves my back is a win. And finally, I mop the floors. Unfortunately, my mop is not cordless, but I am in search of a cordless one. If you know of a good mop steamer that is cordless, Please let me know, and I would love to get one. Mopping is such a workout, and it really strains my back. I'm often in a lot of pain after. I'll then go into my hot tub to help with the pain. It is crazy how dirty those floors get, but like I said, there's seven people living in this house, so it shouldn't be surprising that the pads look like that. And here it is, the final result, a clean kitchen. Because cleaning the kitchen takes a lot of energy, that is the only activity I plan for the day. I pay attention to how my body is responding and if it's giving signs that it's not a good idea, I'll stop. As much as I love a clean kitchen, it is not worth pushing yourself to a point of triggering a flare. Managing your energy as well as how far you can push yourself is an art. You get better with time, but inevitably we will misjudge. And that's okay. It is part of living chronically ill. I rather trigger a flare here and there, but live life, than be always afraid and never do anything. Thank you for watching and I hope this video has inspired you to get cleaning. I sure do need some motivation to do it. And I will see you next week.